Hello, hello. Welcome. I am so excited to be here with my colleague and friend, Samantha. Hi, Samantha. Hello. We are going to be having a really meaningful and impactful conversation. And I'm super excited to do not only like the the work of clarifying and, and educating ourselves and learning, but then also get into our bodies, right? And, and move the energy around and do some high vibe work. So um, today we're, we're talking all about five things you do every day that affect your hormones and how to really take control and feel empowered when it comes to optimizing your hormone health, especially your vitality, your energy. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Amanda Hinman. I am the founder of Hinman Holistic Health and the creator of the Natural Thyroid and Hormone Solution Program, where my team and I help women in 12 weeks to massively increase their energy, increase their mental clarity, and optimize their weight so they can release weight, feel amazing in their body. And today I'm going to be sharing with you five things you do every day that affect your hormones and that may be messing with them that you don't even realize that. Mm -hmm. But before, and I think that's so critical, right? We want to know, we want to be informed and be aware. But before we dive into that, I think what's so important and often overlooked is something I want to talk about. I see this every week supporting women and it's a phenomenon. It's actually a silent saboteur that gets in the way. It really holds us back from experiencing that true vitality, that true energy and confidence in our bodies and our health in that long term. So try this on. Let me know if this is true for you. Have you in the past year gotten excited and thought like, okay, I'm going to start eating better. I'm going to make a change to my exercise and workout routine. And I'm really going to feel amazing. I'm going to just make a change in my health. And maybe you got some momentum going for a few weeks, but then after a while, you just said, I'm not going to stick with this. And you fell off. Or perhaps in the past month, you've experienced two or more unwanted symptoms, right? Things like headache or fatigue or brain fog or weight gain or insomnia. And you've just felt overwhelmed of what, you know, I, I want to change this, but I don't even know where to start. And honestly, part of me doesn't even know if I believe that I can be free of these symptoms for the long term. Right. Anyone ever been there? Totally relate. <laughs> yes. Or, or maybe you've been to the doctor in the past year and been told everything is fine, but you don't feel amazing. And part of you has thought, you know, maybe I should go get some additional lab work. Maybe I should have my hormones looked at or have a gut test or just kind of figure out more of what's going on, but you haven't done it yet. Other things have always become more important and you're still kind of in that space of unknown, not feeling fantastic, right? Like I said, this is what I call why bother syndrome. Hmm. And it's so pervasive. Like I said, I see this every single week and there's Honestly, there's no um, blame if you felt this, like, guess what? You're human. You're just like me. You're just like Samantha. <laughs> you're, in, you're in good company. But I'm here to tell you that there is another way. And the truth is all of this information that I'm going to be sharing with you, that Samantha is going to be sharing with you today, it's really, really powerful, great information. But unfortunately, 90% of us won't do anything about it. We'll, we'll listen to this. Maybe we'll watch the recording. We'll be here live. We'll then we'll go about our days and we're not going to make a change. And I know that's hard hitting, but that's the truth, right? So before we dive into the information, before we share really great tools and strategies with you, I think the number one thing is to know that change is possible. Change is absolutely possible. And here's the crazy thing. The science shows us this. Did you know that our body is constantly recreating itself. Like literally we have brand new epithelial cells in our gut lining every five days. We have new taste buds every 10 days. We have new skin cells in 39 days. We have an entirely new liver in about 10 months. So quite literally our body is being recreated 
And what happens is it's often recreated in a very similar physiological environment, right? So we recreate more of the same. If we struggle with headaches, if we struggle with insomnia, if we struggle with weight gain or inflammation, we just continue to perpetuate and recreate more of the same. So we can start to shift this cycle, but what does it take? I mean, it, it starts with our thoughts, which then influence our actions. And when we can change our thoughts and change our actions, we literally change our physiology. We can change a whole completely different health trajectory. You can change your physical body, your entire, every single atom in your body is different within seven years. Can you imagine? I want you to just think about this. Can you imagine where you are today with your current health circumstance and then fast forward seven years from now and be in a much more peak performance, optimal place? Like that is possible for you. So I, I think it's really critical that we talk about this piece of the puzzle first before we dive into the tools and the techniques, right? Mm -hmm. And it's this magic equation. It's what you actually do and what you think that is so important to start to bring awareness to, to start to see, well, what are my thought patterns? What are the things that I get to shift and get to adjust to create a new normal? And I know this is true because this is what I did, right? So um, my, my history, I kind of feel like this pathway of leading women to be empowered and confident with their long-term health found me, it was like a divine appointment because um, many years ago, I thought I was ideally healthy because I was a group fitness instructor and a sports performance trainer. And I you know, ate salads every day and had 13% body fat and all of these things. I quote unquote, thought I was healthy on paper and then was diagnosed with an autoimmune condition and was told that I would have to take medication for the rest of my life and that my body was attacking itself. And I remember being like, enraged like what oh what are you telling me that I'm I have this lifelong diagnosis like what is going on and I just was totally blindsided because I hadn't been aware of what my thoughts were my actions and and really understanding what was happening in my body and then fast forward 20 months after that my oldest of four daughters at age eight started to experience such extreme anxiety. She was having 10 to 15 seizures in a day. I mean, literally debilitating. She had to end up taking four benzodiazepine medications just to make it through a 24 hour period medic or seizure free. Talk about like throwing what I thought I knew to be true outside the window. Like everything was flipped on its head and it was massively overwhelming. And yet that was the pathway that led me to explore and to say, okay, there has to be a different option here. We were told she would never be able to drive a car. She'd be on medication for life. And I knew that we had to create a new different, a new different pathway for her. Right. So that was the catalyst to go back and study functional medicine science, which is all about root cause resolution in a specific customized manner for your body. It's understanding what are the dynamics at play and what are the factors in your lifestyle that are going to create a change in your physiology? So the good news is in eight months time, she was able to wean off of all of her medication. I was able to wean off of my medication and like balance the body. So I know that this is true. I know it's possible to create a different situation with your health, right? Just like Sarah, I also know this is true. Sarah, one of my clients, she was typical, a busy mom running two businesses and kind of put her health on the back burner. She knew that she should be nourishing her body and eating differently. She knew that she would benefit from strength training to maintain lean muscle tissue. And it wasn't until she was faced with a diagnosis of osteoporosis and some really, you know, pretty scary medical um, appointments that she had that she's like, okay, you know what? Like I get to do this differently. I, I get to lean into support, become empowered, gain the skills, have the accountability and someone to help be on this journey with me. And she completely got a com complete, complete bill of health. They're like, what are you doing? Because your labs have totally shifted direction here. I mean, she feels so clear and so empowered. It's, it's great to know that like the trajectory is now different. Or my client, Sue, I know this is possible because Sue came to me after she had been on Zoloft for a number of years, thinking this is the only way to manage my anxiety. 
And then lo and behold, she goes back for her annual checkup and is diagnosed with hypertension and given a second prescription, a second diagnosis. And she finally is like, enough is enough. I don't, I don't want to just be on this inevitable stepping into progression of another diagnosis, another medication. I need to figure out what's going on. And again, through guidance, through education, through inspiration, and through support to change her thoughts, to change her actions. She was able to wean off of her medication, release weight, feel like a totally, she's like, I feel like a new woman. My husband's even like, you are a completely different person than you were eight months ago. Right. So I know that change is possible. And that's the cool thing. Like when we change our thoughts, change our actions, our physiology has to follow suit. So Samantha, you, you're shaking your head, right? You, you get that. Oh my gosh. I'm so grateful to be doing this with you today because I, I was 12 when my health journey started and I got chronic joint inflammation and I didn't have answers from Western medicine. I was fine on paper and I didn't have the support, the education, the guidance at that age. And because of that, I was stuck in mine for about seven years before I started to get that education, that guidance to see a difference. And I do not want you to be in it for as long as I was in it. And so I'm so grateful that you're here. You're learning this information. So you don't have to be in it for seven years, the same way that I was. Totally. Yes. Like I'm so celebrating, like you're here, you're, you're tuning into this type of information, this type of inspiring, um, you know, possibility. And that's, that's amazing. I love it. Yes. And, and the cool thing is this is why we get to create a different trajectory. I mean, honestly, the studies show that 3% of us adults are healthy, happy, and on track to stay that way. According to the Mayo Clinic proceedings report, like three percent, three, that's less than, I mean, a single digits, less than 5% oh. of people yes. are on a trajectory, even more clarifying 85% of women over the age of 60 are on track to be diagnosed with two or more chronic lifelong diseases, right, Samantha? So this is why the work we're doing is so, so, like, I feel so passionate about it. Like, let's change that norm. That that doesn't need to be the trajectory for most of us in the next, mm -hmm. you know, 10, 20, 30 years. We want to, we're all about creating quality of life. We're about creating, I want the next 30 years of your life to be empowering, to be amazing, to feel, uh, feel good. Right. Mm -hmm. So we get to break the why bother syndrome. <laughs> we get to bust through that. We are going to change the course of your health for the next, like I said, the next several decades. And you're here, like you're doing the work. We're in the right place. So congratulations to you. Super, super excited. And the good news is just like in nature, just like in the plant species, whenever there is a threat, the antidote is always found close by. It's, in fact, it's always found within 12 feet. Did you know that? I did. I think that is like literally the coolest thing. Nature it's is cool. so intelligent. Yeah, it's so intelligent. Like whenever there is something that could potentially get in the way, we have the antidote. So we just get to look for it. So I want to share with you. In fact, I'm going to um, share my screen here. And then this is a workbook that I'll make sure that everyone gets. So you have access to... Um, will you give me a thumbs up? Do you see five things? Yeah. Okay, cool. That affect your hormones workbook. So you can have this This is about charging up your energy, increasing mental clarity, releasing weight, the magic equation. This is the magic equation that we do with all of our clients in the, the thyroid and hormone solution program. Um, and I do want to just mention up here, there's a link to take your free hormone health assessment. So if you ever want to go back afterwards, Take assessment, see where you are, see where, you know, thyroid, insulin, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, see where those are landing based on how you are feeling. Your body is always giving you clues. And the cool thing is your hormones are like the messenger molecules in the body. So when you can pay attention and lean into the symptoms or the nuances, you can get really clear insight about where your health is currently. But this is, like I said, the silent avatar. Why bother? syndrome. We are going to bust through that today. Um, so you can see if any of these scenarios that I talked about relate to you, but today we're going to talk about the antidote to our beliefs. So maybe belief, perhaps you've had this belief. I can experience true vitality and optimal weight as I get older. 
right? Kind of the old adage, as I get older, just kind of anticipate and expect that my body is going to have more and more problems. Well, here's the antidote. Like question, is that really true? Do I actually know any woman over the age of 40 who has made an improvement in her health? You know, maybe at age 40 or 42, she was in a certain situation, certain set of circumstances, but by the time she was 45, she was actually had released weight. She was more tuned in. She was maybe eating differently. She was showing up with more confidence, wearing different clothes, feeling amazing in her body, had less aches and pains. So I think a lot of this is we get to case build. We get to show ourselves evidence that this is in fact a false belief. It doesn't have to be our reality unless we don't question it, unless we don't look and find the antidote, right? So I'm going to give you space here to think about like, who do you know, or who are you aware of? It may not be somebody that you personally know in your sphere, but who are you aware of that has actually improved their health as they've increased in age, right? So taking that time to jot something down, write it down. I'm going to do it with you because I feel like always reinforcing this case building is it's, this is what strengthens that belief and that possibility. So let's just take a moment here. I have, I always think of, um, my, many people come to mind, but one person that stands out to me is because I met her in person last year, JJ Virgin, you know, she turned 60 and she's like, I am stronger and more vibrant now than I was 10 years ago when I was just overwhelmed, overworked and burning myself out. And it's, it's so interesting to see these scenarios of really questioning, is that true? Or can I have a completely different reality? Mm -hmm. And then belief number two I can't stick with it. Right. So totally we've, I've been there, you know, there's definitely been things that I've started and stopped and fall off the wagon. So what's the antidote? What do we get to case build? How do we get to reinforce our belief that we can stick with it? So has there ever been anything that wasn't natural, wasn't intrinsic? Like, let me ask you this. Do you brush your teeth every day? Chances are, you do. And there wasn't, there was a time period in your life where that was not natural, right? You had to be reminded. Maybe your parents had to, you know, Hey, when you're two or three, go brush your teeth. Remember before bed or when you get out in the morning, I, I still, I have my youngest is um, 10 years old. And sometimes I'm like, I'm, before she leaves the house, I'm like, did you brush your teeth? And she's like, yes, mom, I did. But it's like having that encouragement, having that accountability. Right. But the reality is we can, learn to create habits, even when something isn't always instinctive, when it isn't always a first thing to do with it. So um, I want you to take a moment to, again, find case build, find evidence. What is something in the past that maybe at one point it was hard for you to do, or it wasn't part of your life, maybe even riding a bike. Like maybe there was a day when you couldn't ride a bike but then you practice and you did it and over and over, and now you probably can still ride a bike, right? What are, what is something that you at one point didn't do regularly or couldn't do or couldn't stick with it. And now you do. So like, again, give yourself a, a minute here to reflect and be honest, like build up that belief, find that antidote that it is possible for you to stick with it.
Samantha, I don't know if I want to put you on the spot. Do you want to share anything that maybe at one point was hard for you to do consistently, but you've learned to be able to create a habit and just a new normal? So I had to go gluten and dairy free about 10, 11 years ago. And that was one of the first things that really helped my chronic pain journey. And I did not think I would be able to do that. And there was the education, there was the times where I'd slip up or I wouldn't know something. And then I got that feedback from my body of how it would feel after that. And like slowly but surely that uh, became easier and easier, especially when a decade ago, gluten and dairy free options were not a thing. Like it was so not a thing. And so it was so much harder to live that lifestyle a decade ago than it is today. So that was one of those ones where I I first heard it from my practitioner. I was like, my whole family is going to think I'm nuts. I'm from the Midwest, like meat, potatoes, cheese, like all, all the things and bread for everything. So that was definitely one of those habits where I was like, I don't know how I'll do this. And it's so interesting, right? Because like what once seemed impossible is now just like, that's just who I am. That's just how I live. Right. Do you, mm-hmm. do you now on a regular basis, even like put a lot of energy and thought and like consideration to it? It's like, kind of like you just get into the pattern. Yep. It's just super simple. It's just what I do. And then uh, we had a friend that was like, oh, I can't wait for you to try this like Brazilian style of like bread and cheese when you come to visit. And it was like, yeah, no, like that's not even tempting to me. I don't have to feel that social pressure of, I know you want me to eat this, but now I've got to defend, right? Like it's just an easy, like, yeah, I don't, I don't feel the pressure to have to do that. So awesome. It's cool. It's like true evidence of our ability to adapt and our ability to change. I yeah. love it. I love it. Cool. Okay. Let's do one more antidote to the why bother syndrome. Cause again, when we case build, when we reinforce this, it just it like bolsters our capability, right? It increases our skill set and our and our ability to really experience what we want. Um, so belief number three, it's too overwhelming and too confusing and to know what to do and what will work for my body. I've tried this thing, I've tried that thing, I hear about this. Like the reality is we live in information overload age, right? There's definitely no lack of information you can find. The key is to know how to prioritize it and to take steps that are going to be most impactful for you. So the antidote to this is how can I find support, right? And I think it's key to have support that's going to be able to be customized for your body, for your lifestyle, and really have that kind of back and Samantha, just like you said, it's like that back and forth feedback mechanism, because the reality is we're not going to necessarily know everything that will work for us specifically without trial and error. Mm -hmm. So it's a willingness to take some action, try some things, look for the feedback loop. Our body is the fastest like feedback mechanism that there is. It will always communicate to us in the form of how we feel and be present, reflect, be present to that. So I think it's, it's really key. Like thinking about where can I, is it possible? Are there are there support mechanisms in existence? Like you, you and I both know that there is like, what could I find that can help to streamline this? That can help me to feel more focused, not alone and to have guidance, guidance from a trusted source guidance that can help to streamline and really hold that loving accountability. So again, taking a moment to reflect where in your life, perhaps it was getting your college degree Perhaps it was starting a new career, like where in your life before have it felt overwhelming or felt like, oh my gosh, there's so much I don't know yet about this. And what was your proven roadmap? What did you do? Did you have peers around you? Did you have a guide or a mentor? Did you take some classes to do some learning? Like what is your antidote? What has been a proven track record when you wanted to move forward in a direction? So take a moment to reflect on that and see how to overcome overwhelm.
And I'll share for me, it's always about having a plan. Like I, I'm like success leaves clues, right? Look for people who have done this before. Look for other proven track record of, okay, this is, this is something, someone who's been in a similar situation or has been through something that I can relate to or has what it is that I'm desiring. And let me learn from them. Let me get close. Let me, you know, take their classes, learn from them, understand their process and their journey. And that has been such a blessing in, in terms of massive transformation. What about for you, Samantha? What has been like an, a proven um, way to get out of overwhelm and make progress? Yeah. Well, one of the ways is what I'm going to share today, which is vibing. Um, yeah. That always helps me get out of my head and out of the spinning overwhelm and tune in to what is the intelligence, the guidance my body is giving me. So that way I can hear myself versus always kind of seeking external. But then it is it's seeking my peers, it's seeking courses, it's seeking coaches, um, always having those additional people in my life who have been there, who have done it, who can help shortcut that that journey for me. So it's like a mixture of having my external support who do have the expertise who can, you know, kind of see objectively my journey and give me guidance. And then also making sure I am listening to my own voice as I'm taking each step along the path. I love it. I love it. And I would say, yes, that's a, that's a very clear um, combination that works. And I do the same thing, like taking time to always tune in and process other sources of, you know, guidance and opportunity and possibility and really make it customized for you. I mean, that's how you mm -hmm. kind of adapt it into your own unique. I love it. I love it. So this is so good. Awesome. So hopefully that's helpful to kind of clear some of the space, right. To have us really look within of like, okay, what is, what does this mean for me around how I can make this a sustainable shift forward and really get that, um, that new thought pattern, that new action that I'll take to make a change in my health. And so let's dive in now into five things we do every day that affect our hormones that maybe we're not even aware of it. And it goes hand in hand with, again, some of the things that we talked about. The first is what I call our morning minutes, right? And this is quite literally what we're doing, how, what, how we are spending the first 15 minutes of your day. And that's because the 15 minutes of the day is literally when the body turns on, we switch out of that sleep, that rest, that different theta brainwave state. And we switch into go mode. Like, okay, this is our world. This is the interactive interactions. And this is the, uh, all of our perceptions and engagement with what is happening in our daily life and how we inform our nervous system about the status of our world in those first 15 minutes sets the trajectory for the rest of the day. What I mean by that is our thoughts, our hypothalamus is what's responsible for our thoughts and our perceptions about people, circumstances, expectations, situations in our life. That starts this cascade of hormonal signal down what's called the HPATG axis through the pituitary, the thyroid, the adrenals, and the ovaries, the gonadal tissue. Well, if within that first 15 minutes of the day, we wake up, in a fight or flight, like alarms going and we're thinking, oh no, oh my gosh, I, I'm going to be late. Or I have this never ending to-do list. I have these 25 things that need to get done in the, in the first three hours this morning, which can be a perpetual cycle, right? The body gets used to being informed that our world is not safe. So instinctively, automatically, it's going to signal a cascade of hormones that are going to prepare for fight, 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 flight, or flee. It's going to tell us that we need to prepare to defend. And that is not a rest, restore, rebalance signal to the body. So what you do in those first 15 minutes can have such a huge, profound, lasting impact for the next several hours. So again, what do we do with those first 15 minutes? The first thing is to reflect honestly, like, what am I doing in the morning? What did you, what did you hold up there? Just so many people immediately, right? Right to the phone, right to the, right phone. To the inbox. Right to the phone. Yeah. And actually it's interesting because I'm not necessarily saying that the phone is bad. It's what are you using the phone for? If you go right to the phone to set your meditation, okay, yes. maybe that's helpful. But if you go right to the phone to check your, your social media feed or your email, chances are you're getting into other people's agendas right off the bat. Right? So it's that 
it's that prioritization for self and for grounding and signaling to our physiology, hey, life is a-okay. I've got this all handled. This is, I can, I can be clear. I can be focused. I can choose to connect with my higher self. I mean, that's, I, you know, my, I personally tend to start it with meditation. First thing every morning, I literally lay in my bed. Don't even get out of my bed. As soon as I wake up first 15 minutes is meditation breathing. But so that's, that's step number one in terms of what affects the hormones, how we start to signal that HPA TG cascade in the body. Um, second thing that we do every single day that affects our hormones is what I think of as our morning makeup, right? So the average woman puts on 12 products by the time she leaves the house in the morning, 168 toxic chemicals on average go into our body. And you know, this, Samantha in a big way, yep. right? So it's about being aware that the skin is like a giant mouth, what we're putting on in terms of lotions, makeup, um, Yes. Great. You can definitely catch the, the replay. Absolutely. But what we're putting on in terms of all of the components that come into contact with our physical body, that makes a difference, especially when perpetuated day in and day out for years, decades. So really thinking about what, would it, what, what's a positive step that I can take forward. And I always like to chunk this down. Maybe first one month, you're going to like, okay, I'm going to look at my makeup products and look for a cleaner alternative or things that have less chem chemical toxins. Maybe the next month, you're gonna start to look at the bath products like shampoo and things like that. But just starting to be aware of the, the products and the items that are in your home environment that contain chemicals that can, that can disrupt our endocrine system. So that's step number two. Um, step number three, things that impact your hormones every single day are breathing breaks. So the importance again, of resetting our nervous system. When we stop to take long, deep, slow breaths, become present in our body. And Samantha, again, we're going to do this work in a little bit. That is so informative. The vagus nerve gets activated when we take a big, deep, full breath, filling up our diaphragm. That vagus nerve is afferent. 90% of the nerve fibers are signaling from the gut up to the brain. It's, it's not the other way around where you think the brain is controlling the body, but that vagus nerve helps to signal to the gut or to the brain, everything is calm, everything is safe. And that's in large part influenced by how we are breathing. When we breathe in short, shallow breaths, it's like, it, it's the signal of, okay, this is, you have to be on alert. This isn't safe. Right. The number one thing for our body to be balanced, to prevent blockage, impairment, and depletion is activation of what's called the parasympathetic part of our nervous system that rest, digest, and heal. So breathing, I literally take a little timer on my phone four times a day. It says breathing break, breathing break, an alarm goes off to just remind me to stop and be present. Even if it's only four deep, slow breaths. Right. Inhaling for a count of four, or maybe pausing and holding, exhaling for a count of four and doing those box breaths four times. That's enough to shift the signal to the nervous system. So that's number two. If we don't become conscious of our breath, chances are we're just kind of running an autopilot in that sympathetic state all day long, affecting our mm -hmm. hormones. Um, the next thing for number four is eating hygiene. This is not necessarily what we are eating. It is how we are eating. So again, going back to the nervous system, when we eat, when we're multitasking, or if we're kind of shoving it all down and not even noticing the foods that we're eating, that makes it really, really difficult for our body to digest and to absorb the nutrients. Even if you have, this was me, I was living in eating really healthy food, organic salads and mostly vegetarian for years thinking I was quote unquote, super healthy, but I was eating in between aerobic classes. I was eating on the run. I was perpetually like just grabbing and going. I, I don't even think I remember tasting the food very much. It was just more of like functionality, get it in because it's supposed to be quote unquote healthy for me. My body was not digesting it. It was not getting the nutrients it needed because it was burning in that sympathetic fight or flight response it wasn't able to adequately break apart the 
peptide chains and break apart the proteins and actually get to a place where it can be absorbed at a cellular level. So it doesn't do us a whole lot of good, even if we're really intentional with what the food is, if we're not eating in a way that's calm, that's relaxed. I would say one of my favorite um, tips and tools is to like literally get in the habit of like smelling your food, <laughs> pick up your plate if you need to and smell the aroma of the food, because that starts to signal to your olfactory and other senses like, oh, we're going to be eating here. It starts to stimulate digestive secretions and saliva in the mouth. It prepares the body for what is coming next. When we can smell it, when we can hear it, like the sizzling of oil or onions sauteing in a pan, all of that ambience prepares the body to digest, right? Oftentimes today, we just are in a rush. We eat quick and we scarf it down. We go chomp, chomp, swallow, chomp, chomp, swallow with these big chunks. Um, one, of, one of my favorite strategies and tools is to have our clients take three almonds and eat them like they normally would. And then notice and come back and take three more almonds and chew it 20 to 25 times. And notice the huge disparity in the consistency. You want your food to be almost liquefied in your mouth with your teeth and your saliva before it goes down the hatchet, because that makes it easier for the rest of the body to digest. In fact, I'm going to tell you a story of a woman, Beth, we worked with. So she obviously had been really intentional with her food and, and just could not understand why she couldn't get rid of these extra 10 pounds. The number one thing she worked on, number one thing was radically changing her eating hygiene and how she was chewing because she was constantly eating on the go. She literally substantially changed the quantity of food that she was consuming simply because she was eating mindlessly. She was almost like just like an a vacuum, just kind of on autopilot as she was multitasking. She changed not only the volume of food she was eating, but the effect in her body. She went when we did her micronutrient test with many areas where she just wasn't having adequate nutrition to having complete transformation and her metabolism could kick on then. It wasn't in starvation mode. It wasn't saying like, we're never getting enough nutrients coming in. So we have to stockpile what we have all of a sudden she released those 10 pounds because she substantially changed the way that she was eating, right? So huge, huge change is possible when we do these things, but that goes back to the, we got to get out of why bother syndrome. We have to actually implement. And step number five, five things we do every day that affects our hormones is I call it the stories we tell ourselves, the thoughts. And this is an opportunity. Anytime you are experiencing a negative emotion or just some sense of lack of peace, feeling unsettled, feeling frustrated, feeling irritated, feeling resentful, feeling worried. My favorite phrase is I feel blank, insert the emotion because the story I'm telling myself is, and we have to start to expose that because oftentimes we don't look at it. We're not aware of it. So we can't invalidate it. There's always another perspective. That may be real. That may, it's, it's about acknowledging. It's not about diminishing what we're feeling, what we're experiencing. It's about seeing it, recognizing it, having compassion for ourselves, but then also questioning like, hmm, is there, is there something else that may be happening? I remember for a long time, my husband and I just were having really difficult marit marital challenges. I mean, now actually tomorrow, I was just telling Samantha, tomorrow's our 22 year wedding anniversary. So we've been together for a long time. We dated seven years before that since high school. But there were definitely ebbs and flows. And there was a time where I just felt so resentful because I felt like he was never present. He wasn't really engaged in giving me much attention and adoration. And I was so resentful. And it wasn't until I started to really question, like, I feel so underappreciated because the story I'm telling myself is that Mike could care less about me. Is that actually true? Or did I have a chance to finally see he was really, really stressed about providing. He was a, at that time, he was a sole provider for our family of six. And he just had a lot of pressure that he was putting on himself. So it really wasn't even about me. It was about his own pressure and his own sense of overwhelm. Right. But I can't even see that. I can't even get out of my own spin until it's kind of acknowledged and outside and something to look at. So that's just getting in the habit of every single day. I do this daily still to this day, writing down all of the different emotions that I'm feeling because the story I'm telling myself is, and that can be freeing. 
to start to look at it through a new lens. Mm -hmm. So those are five things that we do every day that affect our hormones. And again, it's about practice, putting these into practice and making shifts, small changes. Oh my gosh. It's so good. And I think one of the other points that I I just want to share with everything that you did is you have to believe that it gets to be simple. I think because if you're struggling with some of these things right now and you're hearing these five steps, it's like, that feels way too easy. And we don't, we think it's got to be hard. It's got to be complicated, right? That why bother syndrome, we're, we're building it up to be this huge thing in our brain. And so it's easy to why bother because it's so complicated. It's so hard. It's so elusive. Mm-hmm. I just have to breathe before I eat. I just have to swap out the products that I'm using, right? It seems too simple. I haven't heard this. Why haven't I heard this from other places or what, how could it actually make this profound of a difference? But it does, because like Amanda is saying, the body heals itself. And when you're inputting the signal that I'm safe, I can relax here. I can release this tough stranglehold that I'm holding on my physical body. Then we get to open up all these resources for the body to actually heal itself. One of the big areas that I really focus on with individuals is helping them get out of the spin, is helping them reduce the toxic burden that's on their body. And a huge part of that is in their thoughts, in what they're doing. And that's where in Vibe and Embodiment, we really have a tool and a space to process and to look at the emotions of what's coming up. So I just love everything that you um, are speaking to so much, but I was like, you have to believe that it can be simple, that it doesn't have to be so complicated. I love that you said that. I'm just going to affirm that 100%. We have women all, and we do, we look at much more complex, you know, gut microbiome Mm -hmm. tests and looking at your Dutch hormone tests and see the physiology that is, and that can get super, super technical and complex. But Samantha, I'll tell you at the end of the day, sure. That can point us in terms of, and kind of give us a little bit of specificity of certain supplements or ways to start. It doesn't matter if these core concepts are not addressed and altered Mm -hmm. because you could, I can treat a microbiome infection or candida overgrowth or something. Sure. I can give you a supplement or an antibiotic to help that. But if the environment doesn't change because our way of living stays the same, it will just reoccur again in another 12 months, 18 months, it'll come back. Right. Mm -hmm. So the foundation is actually very simple. It really, really is. And it gets to be simple. That was the biggest surprise for me, especially, I mean, my healing journey, but I say, especially with my daughter, it was so so potent and so visceral. And I was so fearful. So we were diving deep into every nuance. And at the end of the day, the things that move the needle, the things that allowed her to get off of eight pills a day was these. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And like, these are tools that are simple, affordable, free, (laughs) that you get to have the power to take into your own hands, but you have to give yourself the permission to do them. Mm -hmm. And so that is really where I come in because I love that Amanda does that like functional deep dive, helps you find that root cause, helps you point you in that direction. Mm -hmm. And what I do, so I own a company called Revive Living and I really support women to help reduce that toxic overload help them get out of their own head, reconnect to their own body. So that way they can start to trust themselves again. They can start to access the healing ability within their body. They can start to take action versus be in this why bother state and start to bridge that gap to really creating the life that they want. And like I said, I was in that same environment for seven years before I started to see a change. And the biggest thing was learning to start to change my thoughts learning that the body has a healing ability that I was not broken because Mm -hmm. I was self-hating so much. Mm -hmm. I was self-harming myself. I was suicidal. I was depressed. I was anxious. I was moving through all these things. And it was because I was locked in my own brain, blaming, 
feeling broken, feeling like nobody else had answers for me. And that kept me locked in this prison and this physical state of just so much pain and discomfort. So I can totally relate and know what it's like to struggle feeling like a foreigner in your own body, to mm -hmm. want to disconnect, to numb, to disassociate from the roller coaster of pain and discomfort that you feel to experience the chronic joint pain, the acid reflux, the migraines, the painful PMS symptoms, the mood swings, the adrenal fatigue, the anxiety, the depression, and to just freaking lose hope. But to know that I was there where I literally felt like the light at the end of the tunnel was going out and to now be here today to have the mental clarity, to not have the, the migraines, to not have all of those different things and to know that it is such simple tips like what Amanda is sharing to start to move that needle forward to where you can then dive into more of the deeper specificity. Um, one of the things that I forgot to mention before we hit record, Amanda, is can you share host permissions with me? So that way I can play some music for us because yes, yes, yes. how do I do that? Perfect. Remind me how I do that. If you click participants and then you oh, click okay, perfect. more okay. on my name, you can see like a co-host. Oh. make host cool co host yeah there you go perfect okay cool i was like oh no we can't share music from that host we'll do yeah. it later cool um so the method i'm going to be sharing with you guys is to really develop from that own place of i needed to find a healthier way to cope i knew i didn't want to live i was told by physicians you just have to learn how to live with this amount of pain and something deep within me was like i don't want to live with this amount <laughs> of pain and i know there's if i'm going to be here if i'm going to live there's got to be a different way and so i just started seeking it and this technique was really developed throughout my journey to help me get out of my head, to help me get out of the, just wanting to completely dissociate from the pain in my body and to learn how to start to sit in my emotions, to learn how to start to curiously observe my thoughts, to start to have compassion for myself when I really just fully had self-hatred, beratement. And my body was crying out for support. It just wanted me to listen. It just wanted me to take action to help alleviate some of that fire within that was going on. Um, not the good digestive fire, but the bad inflammation fire that was just taking over. And instead, I just kept hitting it and hitting it and hitting it with this negative and hurtful self-talk when it just wanted to be loved. It just wanted to be listened to. Um, and to really have a healthier way to process emotions, I did not know how to articulate. We did not talk about emotions in competitive gymnastics in my family growing up. And so I had no landscape for how to really move through that environment, how to process this huge change and identity shift that just took place in my life. And so this technique is really to help you just process and feel the emotions without having to know like, what do I want to say to talk to a therapist, to journal? So that way you can really be your own coach. So that way, whether you're working with Amanda, a therapist, like whoever your care team is, at the end of the day, it's still you in your head. And you have to learn the 23 other hours of the day how you're going to treat yourself, how you're going to move through that so you can stay in an empowered place and really be your best health advocate so you can live that long, high quality life that both Amanda and I are passionate about because of the things that we both experienced in our personal lives. Um, and from the journey that I experienced, I have a deep belief that we hold so much of our emotional pain that we have not yet processed in the body. Yes. When we are in that fight or flight, it's like, oh, she doesn't have the space to process this. We're, we're going to hold that for later. Like you got to mm -hmm. learn this lesson. So we're going to hold this and we're going to hold this and we're going to hold this and we're going to hold this. And when we just try to keep pushing through, we start accumulating all of this um, emotional weight on our body that really weighs on us. And that can start to feel like joint pain and discomfort, some fascia tension and pain. And this is a way to just release that tension that we hold in our body. Cause so much of us, we're sitting at a desk, we're driving in a car, we're cooking, like we're, we're like this all day long versus giving ourselves this ability to move and play as freely as we did when we were kids. So vibe and embodiment was this technique that was born that really combines gentle, intuitive movement because I couldn't do impact movement for many, many years in my life. 
It combines music as our guide, as a way to just step into the song and let yourself feel the vibration, the music, the emotion versus you have to really be in your own step. You get to kind of use it as a vehicle where it's not, it's a little bit more objective where it's like, oh, what would it feel like if other people were feeling these things? I'm going to try that on for three minutes and then I get to take it back off, right? So it's not like when I was feeling depressed, it was like, I will never see the light again, right? So it's like, I just get to like tap into this emotion for a moment. It's not here forever. And then I get to take it off if I want to. And then really utilizing the power of visualization because our brain does not know the difference between true thought and a made up thought. It just here's thoughts, it here's reality. And so when we are having that self dialogue, that is, I am broken, I am this, the body's like, yeah, I, I am broken. I am these things versus telling your body, there is a different way. There is a different reality. Even if I'm only telling myself that in my thoughts to begin with, it sees it as truth, as reality. And so we get to start to use that power of visualization to help create that bridge to help see us to the other side. So there are five steps to this process. And today we're really just playing with it because Amanda set us up. She gave us all the insight and I like echo it in all the different ways. And so I just want us to experience this for today. Now there's no right or wrong way. There's a lot of fun layers that we get to play with, but the biggest thing that you have to do is tune into your breath. Tune into the music, notice how it's kind of guiding you. Like, is there a little beat that you wanna feel in your shoulders and your fingers and your foot? Like, how is it talking to your body? Are you fighting the resistance of how you naturally wanna move? Cause you're in your head of, well, I'm gonna look silly if I move this way, right? Like all the thoughts that prevent us from taking the action. So even though it's in movement, this is going to apply to all the areas of your life of what comes up in your head as you start to practice and move in these ways. But the five steps are first, we gotta build awareness. We gotta build awareness of our thoughts, how we're feeling, how we're breathing. We gotta connect to our body, get out of our head connect to our breath, connect to the music, connect to the vision of where we want to go. We got to process by moving, by breathing, by letting our body kind of work it out. And then through that, we're integrating. We're allowing ourselves to hold space, be present and not just rush through, not just get to the next thing, not just put on blinders and stuff everything down. I was a big stuffer <laughs> my yeah, whole life <laughs> until I couldn't stuff anymore. And then I was like, everything would explode and it did not feel good for me or for the people around me that were unassuming. And through that, it allows us to expand into the fullest version that we know deep down we have the potential to be in this life. And I love so much, Amanda, how you said, I'm feeling this way because the story I'm telling myself is, if you were like me, where you were so emotionally inept and did not, we're not taught the skills growing up. Maybe to make that jump feels like I don't even have the language to navigate that in my brain to get to what is the story I'm telling myself. It's so constant, so pervasive. I don't even hear that story anymore. I just feel all these feelings and I can't make sense of it. Mm -hmm. So if you are like me and you're in that space, I have clients all the time who are similar and they come in and they are the, tell me if this is you, I'm fine. Everything is blowing up in my life, but it's fine. And they're like, yeah fine you know like in this high pitched voice yeah. and I'm like but is it really is it really fine and yeah. they're like no it's not really fine and I say okay great no worries we're gonna find a way through and I'm I want to challenge you that anytime you hear yourself say I'm fine that is you stuffing it down that mm -hmm. is you putting the lid saying if I say anything other than I'm fine it's gonna bubble over and I'm gonna melt and I can't hold it all together so instead of just boop, boop it, putting the lid on and like, I can't feel it, right? That's numbing, that's dissociating from truly what you're moving through in your life to say, I'm feeling a lot. It still has that same air of I'm fine, but I'm feeling a lot gives you space to just be in it and to not be like, there's a cap, everything's fine, just move through. It's like, yeah, I'm feeling a lot, but it's okay. I'm going to be fine. So I always I love just that. love to offer that. That's, that's great. I love that. 
do you find a lot of people come up like I'm fine everything's oh, like falling apart it's, right it's just it's the stuffing down it's the and I always say it's not don't be afraid of expressing and verbalizing the the ugly stuff the things that we almost like in society it's like we don't want to say that we're overwhelmed or that we're scared or that we're sad you know we tend to we tend to shy away from them in in in, in certain situations and, and dynamics Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah no like where you feel good you can trust like opening up and sharing that but to kind of challenge yourself to open up and test the waters with the people in your life to see like can I feel like I can share this here um Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna lead us through just three quick songs the first one we're gonna do some exercises to really calm the body to get into that parasympathetic state so our body can just receive Um, and then I'm going to take us through two songs and what's cool about this technique is it can be basically zero movement I'm just sitting here and swaying to the music or I can be like yes and jumping and leaping and being like Mm -hmm. all around like there's so much range to this practice today it's going to be super gentle predominantly aiming for that visualization component of the practice and to just really reclaim that no matter what I've been moving through in my health journey I get to rise I get to see out the other side I get to choose a new belief a new way of seeing this a new way of being supported um, and really seeing the other side so we're going to tap into that belief and that antidote that Amanda was speaking to earlier So the first um, song, let me go ahead and share my sound. Thank you, Amanda. Okay, so we're going to stay seated for this one. You can stay seated for the entire thing. I'll kind of stand up um, for the second two songs just so you can see. But again, you can stay seated. You can stand and join me depending on how your physical body is feeling today. But first, we're just going to start through with some tapping. So take three fingers. We're going to, I'll call out the different points. You'll breathe through the nose, deep into the belly, and you'll exhale out through the mouth. All right. Can you hear that? Yes. Cool. All right. So starting on our cheekbones, we're going to take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Get a nice, good tap going on. You don't want to go too hard, but you don't want to be like gently. (laughs) So get in there. Really feel deep into the belly. Start to connect to the body. We've been thinking. We've been learning. So just feel. How are you feeling today? Kind of shake out the hands. Find just beneath the clavicle notches. Tap there on the chest. It's a great point midday. If you're taking that breathing break, you're like, oh, I'm feeling kind of low energy. Tap right here. Increase that energy. Nice deep breaths. We're going to come down onto the middle of the sternum. This is a great point for helping increase our immunity. And really feel those feet round on the floor. Feel your feet be held by the chair. And then go ahead and tap at the sides of the ribs. So kind of find your bra line and follow it over to the side. I always love to think as this is the point that is going to help you metabolize. So if you are in that huge state of overwhelm, this is the point that you're going to want to focus on and tap to help your body start to metabolize and move through that. Take a deep breath. And then I want to take us through one more little exercise. So you can stand up to do this one. Take your feet hip distance apart. You can stay sitting too, Amanda. You'll breathe in and you're going to pretend like you've got serving platters. You're going to reach your right hand up towards the ceiling, left hand towards the floor and try to stretch them apart. Exhale back to center. Inhale, left hand goes up, right hand goes down. Stretch, 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 hold the breath. Exhale, release. Nice. Deep breath in. And the center. Left side up. Two more. 
Where are you feeling sensation in your body? Where does your mind's eye get drawn? Keep following that breath. Last one. Oh, big exhales out. And to just notice, like, where, I'm curious, Amanda, this morning, where are you noticing the bulk of, like, sensation? I'm noticing in my right low back. I think I told okay. you I had surgery in my ACL, so I'm carrying, I'm definitely walking left side. I'm definitely carrying more on this side of my back. Okay, nice. Okay, beautiful. So now for these next two songs, like I said, you can stay seated or you can stand up. Now for these two songs, I really just want you to visualize like what is coming up as you hear the music, as you hear the words. And for this first song, just picture your space. Is a timeline of your life, is the timeline of your healing journey. And I just, as you walk around your room and you listen to this song and you feel your body, just kind of look and kind of visually see all these past versions of yourself. You just have to. Oh, I'm excited for this. <laughs> Let go of the so take a nice deep breath. Towards all. Yeah. Radically accept it wasn't okay, but it's all okay now, now. Oh, In this okay moment, now. I choose my healing. In this what moment, is it that you are choosing? In this moment. To so start to I feel into your body. Healing. To choose to begin again. In this moment, I choose so as you walk healing, around, I let go of what doesn't serve me. See I all those past versions that might have lost hope. For experiences that taught me. For all the Physical experiences that have taught you about yourself, of your health. Pain is not mine to hold. So just gently Judgment move is not mine through to your own. space. Peace is what I This is know. vibe is a dance with yourself, with your higher self, your past, past self. Find me. I am love, I am forgiving, I am overcoming. To start to get curious of There's all the past versions that led you here. My healing. The versions of yourself you've wanted to reject. My healing is my belief. Maybe my you want to place a hand knowing. on your heart. My you feel the music accepted. turn up. You want to my increase the, the movement slightly. To let go. To let Maybe go that's right just now. deepening into to your leg. To choose not creating to a sway. Anymore. Forgiveness is not condoning. Forgiveness Deep is not breath. the past controlling. My present moment now, so I can be here. Be here now. now. My present is a gift. This moment not miss, no more dwelling on what doesn't serve me. Big exhales out. This freedom. Create a gentle sway now. if you're choosing movement this morning. I what does freedom, this freedom feel like? Now. With the arms up, arms open, head tilted. Bless and release. What does not bring me peace? What are I you bless blessing and releasing? And release. What does yeah. not kind of allow me yourself peace. to hold it and let it go? Not drink the poison. Not no, rip not it the so poison. hard. Bitterness, resentfulness, anger, disease. I will feast on joy. I will feast big, on Big, big exhale. Love. Let it go. And goodness. My healing is my belief. My healing is my knowing. My healing is accepting. Come on, my healing is taking that responsibility knowing. to let go. That whisper that no asked you to hold. show up this morning. That asked you to find a new way. This is not condoning. For told you this old way is not working. My present moment now. So I can be here now. Right here, now. right now. Freedom now. Because it's possible. If Amanda and I can I be any example that it is possible anger, for us, disease. that it is possible for you I to. I will feast on joy. I will feast on peace, love, and goodness. What does it feel like to bring love and goodness and joy back into your heart? I will dance with an open heart again. To dance with that open, open heart. heart. I will believe. How do you move again. differently in your space when you come from this place? The past does not define me. I am love. I am forgiving. I am overcoming. Duality is an illusion. There is only 
when I forgive all, I forgive me. I accept wholeness. Where is that forgiveness needed? Towards self, towards others. This is freedom. Feel those deep ground. Bring yourself freedom. back into this present moment. My heart is opening. I can feel Maybe just allow opening, those arms opening, to open opening. up or hold your heart. That heart's feeling good. Letting go. Just feel that Allowing. deep breath expand forward deep and backwards, peace. side to side. Breathe it all in. Even feel those little beats. Maybe it's just in your fingertips, right? Stay all the way through to the very end of the song. Even in those moments where it's so still, we don't feel that forward progress. We hear that why bother energy creep in. Is it really changing? Can you stay in and feel the subtle messages in your body saying, yes, it is working. The change is happening. And I will be able to rise and see the other side. So feel the difference in this song, the difference in the artist's emotion. Can you tap into it? Can you try it on that I will thrive? Feel it in your feet. Gather that energy up through the legs into your pelvis. Start to move from this space. How do you deepen in? Even if you can't bend those legs, like where do you feel the deeper energy root and resonate? Oh, right? You feel that different energy. Come on, gather up the energy. Use those biceps, make a little muscle, feel the power. You will transform. Come on, build it up, turn up the dial. When the feel yourself be victorious. Move through that fire. did not arrive here today on accident. You were meant to be here. You were meant to learn these tools. Come on, feel yourself rise. Connect to that future self, that higher self that knows that your healing is possible. That's whispering you to find a new way. Feel it build up, right? Feel that new beat in the music. Nice. Come on, notice the voice in your head that's like, oh, do I trust it? How can I move with this intensity? I feel weird, I feel funny, right? Notice the thought. Be curious, be compassionate. Turn up that viral, here we go. What is that fire in your life? Is it your own self-talk? Is it the physical symptoms? Is it the circumstance, the other people around you? What causes you to go into that internal place of disbelief? Think again, you will rise no matter what time we that's it. Come on, feel yourself kind of gather it up. Feel yourself rising from within. When this higher self is not feeling these challenges, these struggles with her hormones, how is she going to show up in her life? How is she going to move differently? And just allow yourself in this moment of silence, of stillness, like, Feel the sensation move through your body. What if anything new did you get to access just in those few moments? An old part that you may have forgotten, a belief that was subtle that became louder and stronger. 
anytime you want, you get to connect into this higher self to borrow the resources from other people when you aren't feeling it, your exact self. And to just let your body feel and process it so it can release it and open up more energy for healing. Take a moment, really feel your feet ground and root in. Maybe take both arms out wide and wrap them around. And really just thank yourself for being here, for showing up, for being open to new information, new ways of learning to take care and nourish this one vehicle that we've been given. Take one big deep breath in. And a big <sighs> exhale. Just shake it out. Such a good job. Way to try oh, something new that. today. <laughs> oh, so I'm curious. I'm, what, what if anything came up for you as you were moving through that? Because you are in a version of a different healing journey right now. I am. Yes. You know what? It what came up. It felt so good to just like accept and release and then move and appreciate like, okay, my body is healing. My body is strong. And I, the the thing at the end that kept coming in is having tenderness, mm -hmm. like being, I think it was like a reminder to be like tender with myself and to like, yeah. take it easy and trust and be kind. Yes. Oh, I love that so much, Amanda. And what's so cool, you know, I trained as a, a competitive gymnast growing up for 20, 25 hour weeks. And a large part of our practice was sitting and visualizing our routines, not always taxing and doing the body physically, which we did a lot, but sitting there and visualizing it, creating those connections, that muscle, muscle pathway. So mm -hmm. even if you, you know, you, your leg is in that straight, straight cast and brace right now, is to see that yourself walking, to see yourself dancing and leaping and to like yeah. let your body, your knee know, like we're going to move this way again. Right now you might not. So instead of going to the limitation, I can't move, I can't do this. Maybe not forever right now in this moment while I heal, but I'm going to picture myself moving and doing the things that I want to do. Even if right now it's just me in this chair. <laughs> doing yes. this. Yes, exactly. I love it. That was so fun. It's really, it feels, it feels really free. Oh, that is my favorite part about it. Cause I felt very trapped for a long time and to just be able to access a state of flow within creates so much of that parasympathetic response, creates so much of those hormonal endorphin rushes. Um, mm -hmm. It allows us to access just more peace with where we're at, no matter what our external environment looks like in this moment. So I'm so grateful that you guys got to try this today and to feel it out. Yes. Thank you so much. Hopefully this has been a really, you know, powerful conversation and Samantha, so great to collaborate with you. Thanks. Um, I'd love to share, like I said, I'm happy for anyone who's available and wants to take their free hormone health assessment. That is my gift to you. So you can see kind of where things are and get a touch point and create that awareness. And Samantha, I don't know if you have something that you want to like have, have the, the, the viewers access. Yes. So we have the vibe and embodiment membership, and I do have a $10 code for each of you off your first month for you to join us. We do two 90 minute sessions each month. So you have built in time to create that little pressure steam release and not mm -hmm. just let life keep building up on you. And that's going to be um, friend 10 when you check out at samanthaschmuck.com forward slash vibe dash embodiment. And we will, or Vibe Dash membership, we'll include it in the email links for you guys afterwards. But if you use Friend 10, you'll get $10 off your very first month when you join us. Awesome. Love it. Thank you. Well, thank you and have a fantastic day. And thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Thanks, everyone.